<laughs> it's finally happened. We have a review unit of the Moondrop variations. Let's talk about it. All right, now as a disclaimer, this was sent out to me for review by a post audio, but this won't affect my review in any way, shape, or form. Everything you're gonna hear here is gonna be my own personal opinion. Also, this is gonna be more of a gaming review versus audio file review. I will be touching on audio file aspects, how it sounds throughout the entire range, soundstage, and all that stuff. But it'll be in relation to how well it does in terms of its um, gaming performance. So, uh, you know, with that being said, let's get started. And in classic Moondrop fashion, we get a waifu. Yes, 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 yes. Never stop, Moondrop. Never stop. Anyway, if we open up this lovely box, we're gonna get the IEMs, of course. You also get a carrying box, which also contains our cable, as well as some adapters for different jacks we'll be using. I'm also supposed to have like a set of like ear tips, but this is a demo unit, and whoever used it last probably lost them, so I don't got those ear tips, but they look kinda like this. And it should contain a combination of silicone as well as foam ear tips. But any hoozles, you'll also get this set of tweezers, which are used to put on or take off the optional grills. And with all that aside, you're gonna get a little bit of paperwork as well as some more paperwork. And best of all, we get a waifu postcard but it doesn't just end there we get another waifu card <laughs> Anyway, we'll start with the carrying case. It's quite nice. I don't know if it's real leather or not, but it feels quite luxurious. And inside, we got tons of space to put our REMs and cable inside. Speaking of cable, we're going to get a very nice, thick, high-quality copper cable with thick. cords that are put into a twist braid, which makes it feel very thick, thick, and it doesn't tangle easily, but at the same time, also making it feel very durable. At the very end, you'll find a 3.5 millimeter jack that's set at an angle, and as you can tell here, it is removable, allowing us to change out our 3.5 millimeter jack for a 2.5 millimeter balance jack or even a 4.4 millimeter balance jack, something which a lot of audiophiles in particular will really appreciate. Moving on to the splitter, it's pretty simple and clean and made of metal and it feels quite durable. And as we move up from the splitter, we'll notice that the cables are quite thick and this is definitely very well appreciated for durability. And at the very end, we have flexible ear hooks which end in two pin connectors, which is pretty standard these days. Now as for the IEMs themselves, they are very nicely built with steel face plates that have a very fancy geometric pattern etched on them. The rest of the body is made of like a 3D printed resin that feels very much like beach glass in a way, having a nice weight in a matte texture feel to them. If we look at the shape, it's got this almost custom-like molded feel and look to the design of the earbuds. And this will most definitely affect its comfort, but with all that aside, at the very top, we'll have two pin connectors for your cables. And as you can already tell, the nozzle is one with the body, so I would expect it to be very durable. Much like a custom IEM, it doesn't come with a grill automatically covering the end, but if you really want, it does come with a set of, like, grills you can stick onto there. In a way, for those with a sense of vanity, here's how they'll look like on my head, and these being kind of large or medium-ish size, they fit quite well and they surprisingly don't stick out all that much. I personally found them to be very comfortable as they have a very nice pre-molded shape that's very similar or if not the same as the Blessing 2 shape. I should note that your mileage will vary in terms of comfort depending on the size and shape of your ear and for this particular IEM I would think that it would fit most people pretty well except those with very very shallow and very very small ears. But still your mileage will vary. Alright now when it comes to the sound of the moon drop variations it is very good but probably not in the way you guys would have expected. You see, a lot of people think when, you know, you get to really expensive IEMs, the sound is generally going to be balanced. That is not the case with the variations. It's very clear that they focus a lot on the bass and mid regions, with the mids being the main focus, which both seem a little bit um, forward. And this is a sound I can really get into. I really like it. But let's get a little bit more into detail about it. At the low end, we get a lot of low end. We get a lot of bass, but it's not like an overwhelming amount of bass. But it's interesting in the way that it's handled. The best way I can describe describe it is that it's very bassy but very controlled at the same time. We get a really good range of bass. It does reach into those sub bass regions, those lower bass notes really pulls them up and it gives the sound a really good rumble, good thump to it. We also get a pretty decent punch, not the punchiest I'd say in the world, but the punch is good. It's a good amount of punch. It's not like an overly strong hit where it gets a little bit, you know, too much of like punchy bass if you ever felt that before. It's a good amount of punch, it's a good amount of rumble, it is overall a very clean bass as well. And when I said controlled earlier, what I mean is while there is a lot of bass, noticeably, it doesn't bleed into the mids, it is very well controlled. We get a, a lot of bass, but it is well mannered and controlled that it doesn't like overtake anything else horribly and like get muddy even in terms of its own performance. So, you know, if you're really into bass, but you want like, mm, just, quality of bass these do a damn good job now if we move into the mids it's very clear to me this was probably their main focus when it came to the variations the mids are super clean super detailed super clear they seem also to be like um, a little bit forward but it could be just their sheer presence and cleanliness the sound itself is just it's just 
it's just delicious. I don't know if that's uh, something I can say about sound, but that's how I kind of feel about it. You see, the sound, you know, being what I've said it was, just very detailed and clear and stuff like that, it is also very analytical, but not in the ways that I'm used to. You see, when it comes to analytical sound, it can come off as very sterile and boring, not like the most musical. Like, it's designed for you just to, like, listen to the sound ranges and analyze it to um, mix a record or something like that. When it comes to the mids and the variations, I can discern the sounds very easily throughout the mid-range, but it doesn't bore me to death. It's still a very engaging sound. So, you know, it's got an analytical sound without the negatives of being analytical. It's very interesting. And this also has to do with um, the sound separation you get from it. And I'll get into that a little bit later as I approach um, soundstage and imaging and whatnot. And we'll return on this whole analytical bit when I get to that point. So, let's move on to the highs. The highs themselves are good, but it's clear that they're not the main focus. But even then, they still have a really good reach into those upper ranges. And there were some times where I felt like it would get harsh, but it never got too harsh because it got really high up and just before it reaches a level where I would personally find it to be harsh it never reached it it took me a little time to get used to um hearing it go super super high and I get a little bit of um like anticipation that it would like just hit a point of sibilance but it doesn't get sibilant the highs much like the lows are well controlled but I wouldn't say that they were as detailed as the mids like we do get a pretty decent amount of clarity and um a decent amount of detail, a bit of sparkle in the highs, but they seem to act more in accessory to the mids, where they are there to enhance the mids, if that makes sense at all. Now, I'm not saying that the highs are bad or like an afterthought in design, because the highs are still pretty good and there's a decent amount of detail. It's just that they're not as present as the mids and the bass. Like, you're not going to go to these guys if you're going to go listening to music that's very focused on the highs and you like enjoying that range. That's just how it is. The highs highs are just um compared to the mids and the bass for this guy it's okay but compared to like other iems i've heard still pretty damn good all right now if you move along into the sound stage um it's definitely bigger than your standard iem sound stage it is small it is an iem that's just how things are when it comes to iems but for an iem it's got a pretty spacious amount of um area to work with and you do get some sounds that feel out of your head versus you know stuck in your head when you're listening to them so i was pretty impressed by the sound stage the shape of the sound stage seems to be pretty round overall but you will get more space from your sides versus your front and the back but it does feel very expansive and i do like that the headroom is just you know it's just decent it's not like the highest amount of headroom i've ever felt when i was listening to these guys and uh, this is something you would hear in typically gaming situations when like you know an explosion occurs above you or someone's walking above you not the most space in the world but it's like a decent amount it's like an average amount it's an iem so overall not too bad but what i did notice with the sound stage is there was a lot of sound separation given to the sound which you know in turn leads to that whole analytical bit and this this then plays with the imaging, which is pretty accurate. It's a really accurate sound. I didn't have trouble discerning where things were when I was playing games. Like, things were where they sounded like they should be. So these were very good in the imaging department. And this has to do a lot probably with that analytical sound caused by that sound separation and like how well controlled it is along with like the whole sound range. Now this is all nice and all, but how does this like actually translate into gaming? Because I know a lot of you guys, or maybe some of you guys, who knows. Um, if you play games, you will find analytical sounds to be much better for tracking enemies, especially in a competitive shooter game kind of setting but while the sound of the variations is very analytical like I mentioned due to the main focus being like the mid and the bass region I wouldn't say they are the best sounding IEMs when it comes to competitive settings where you're tracking for sounds for feet and guns and whatnot and this has to do with like I said the mid and the bass regions being the main focus it's very you know it's a very enjoyable sound but when I'm playing more competitive games and I want to listen to like feet and like the sound of guns and whatnot to you know find where people people are, the focus I usually want in my sound would be the mid and the highs because usually that's where the sounds occur for me to track them. And I'm going to really need those highs to really pinpoint perfectly where people are. And you're not going to get that as much on the variations because of the focus on the mid and bass regions in particular. They kind of like overtake your attention compared to the highs. If you want to listen to the highs, you got to really listen into the highs. But the mids and the bass on the variations will just call to your attention much more strongly so it kind of makes it difficult so if you're going to be using this for like a competitive shooter game or just competitive games that requires you to like track for the sounds of people it's not the best there are better options for this but that doesn't mean you can't use it because i was still 
able to use it in those settings pretty decently. Like, if I'm really seriously hunting people, I'll be using other IEMs. But if I'm just enjoying myself and I still need to hunt people, I can still use them. So what does that mean for these guys? It means they're much better for non-competitive settings or if you're playing, you know, competitive games non-competitively. And if you're especially playing a more atmospheric sort of game with an open world, these sound goddamn amazing. It just immerses you in and pulls you in. The, sh the sheer detail of sound, the size of the soundstage for an IEM, the sound separation, the bass, everything. It just, mm, just, just makes the world feels so good like you're there so if you're really into those kind of games or you're just more into like playing more casually and you want like a really good immersive sound these do a really great job it just pulls you in i love the sound of them now with all that being said with the sound in games and whatnot there is one major caveat to them and it's that they're very expensive they are like a 520 dollars that's that's a lot to be paying for this kind of sound and some of you guys may be wondering is it worth it unfortunately when it comes to the sound world at this level it depends because there is if you ever heard of the law of diminishing returns there's a point in which you're like paying more for just incremental like increases of sound quality so people who are into this kind of sound yes i would say it is very good for you and i think most people are kind of into the sound but if you're more into like a balanced sound these would be a terrible option for you guys because these are uh, they're not balanced <laughs> at all but if you're really into those really fun sounds that focuses on the mids and like the bass then uh, these are probably a really fantastic option it could be your actual end game but you know it's really up to your subjective taste in audio now speaking of a more balanced sound i think a lot of people want to like compare this to like the moondrop blessings um well the blessing 2 in particular or the blessing dusk which i don't have unfortunately i do have the blessing 2 though i really wanted to compare them more closely and really like make them fight it out but it's very clear to me after after using them that the sound of each one is distinctly different there's much more of a fun centric like um like bass and like mid-range focus with the variations whereas the blessings too they have a much more balanced leaning sound and some people might even find the blessing two to be lacking very much in the bass and some people might even describe it as having no bass or being anemic but honestly the sound of it is very balanced so it's you know i can't really say that they're comparable due to how different the sound is what would probably be more comparable to the variations is the blessings to dusk which I unfortunately don't have, but what they essentially are is the Blessing 2 with more bass. And from my understanding of like sound and whatnot and what I've heard about the Moondrop um, Blessing 2 Dusk, is that the sound probably sits in between these two guys, so it's like a good in-between. Where if you liked the sound of the Blessing 2, but you wanted more bass in it, but still liked a lot of the sound from the Blessing 2, you get the Dusk. But if you want a lot more bass and more mid-detail, you get the variations. And, you know, I wish I had the Dusk on me to compare them, because it would be really interesting, but I just don't have them, unfortunately. I really wish I could, but, you know, that that's life for you. Maybe I'll get them someday and I can compare them, so... We'll see. What I can say about the Blessings 2 and the variations is that the Blessings 2 will do a lot better in competitive shooter games because you get a more balanced sound, it gives you a good range, and you listen to everything much better. Are they the perfect thing for um, competitive shooter games? Not necessarily, but they're still really, really good if you're going to be playing competitive games versus this, which will be much better for more atmospheric games, but will still give you a decent experience in more um, competitive games. But, you know, you have to also understand, like, what you like in sound because preferences in sound is very very subjective so you better like the sound if you're gonna get either of these because they're both very expensive I should however note that you will be paying a lot more for the variations because um, these are gonna be like two hundred dollars more than the blessing too which is like around the 300 ish dollar range a little you know more or less depending on sales and whatnot whether either of these is worth it to you or not depends on you for me because of what sounds I like the variations too would be just right up my alley this is very much worth it for me because I would really enjoy these sounds and I would use them for just any game including competitive games it does a decent enough enough it does a decent enough job in those games and I mostly play it non-competitively and I play a lot of non-competitive games where I want to immerse myself in the world and even if I do play more competitive style games I like to immerse myself in the world because at the end of the day a game is a game and it's meant to be enjoyed if your life is on the line because it's how you make your paycheck then maybe you know uh, get something else that's just how the world is and how things go so with that being said that's pretty much all i have for today so if this video did help you out um, do leave me a like and you know hit that sub button if uh, you know just to help me exist in this whole youtube space by the way i almost forgot um if you do want to buy this i will have a link in the description along with a link for the blessings too in case you want to buy either of these boys so you know if you buy from there i get a little kickback to also exist in this youtube space um
What else do I got? Right, I also stream sometimes. I've been trying to do it more often. Got a little link down there, down, down in the description if you want to watch me stream and die and whatnot. With all that aside, that's pretty much it. Thanks for stopping by. This has been technical. This has been the variations. This has been a long time coming. So, uh, yeah, that's, that, that, I think that's it. So, uh, see you guys next time.